We talk about a lot of stuff in here. We talk about the Eucharist, we talk about Mass, we talk about purity, we talk about social media, we talk about living our faith. Today's lesson is the absolute most important lesson of your life because this is something that you should be thinking about at every single moment of your life. The most important thing that you can do, the greatest sacrifice that you can offer to God is the sacrifice of your will for His will. I can give a thousand dollars, I can give every dime that I have to the poor. But you know what? I can still give something more. I can give my will. What makes a person holy is uniting their will to the will of God. There's nothing greater that you can do with your life. There's nothing more important that you can do with your day. Ask yourself, how would my day be different if I only did God's will? Imagine how your whole life could be different if you did God's will. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how poor you are, how dumb you are, how handsome you are, how rich you are, God has a plan for your life. It's a plan that's going to satisfy the longing of your heart. Even if you've done terrible things, God has a way to redeem you, to pick you back up, and to put you back in His will. So I have an image up there of a surfer under a wave. This is an analogy that I want to keep bringing back up for the next 15 minutes. When you're in a wave, you have one path. You see him or her, I can't tell if that's a boy or a girl, modern, modern days. <laughs> when you see him or her inside of that wave, a lot can happen. We don't know what's in that water. There could be sharks in that water. That wave, that hole is like the will of God for your life. You can, if you're walking in the will of God, you can be in the most dangerous of circumstances. You can be in a battle. You can be in a war. And if you're doing God's will and he doesn't want you to die, it doesn't matter how many bullets are going by your head, you will not die. But if you're not doing God's will and you're in a padded room, you could die. The safest place to be is in the will of God. There is nothing more important. In the morning, we should wake up and say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Throughout the day, we should say to ourselves, God, what do you want me to do today? Now, the hard part is human nature is one that we worry about the future. We dwell upon the past, and that takes away our peace of soul. So God is giving us actual grace right here, right now, to do his will. Right now is all that exists. Nothing else exists. You might be worried about the future. Many parents might say, maybe you've heard your parents, you say, Mom, what about, they say, Honey, I don't even know if I'm going to be alive when, you, when that happens. And it's true. You worry about things that happened in the past. That does not exist. All that exists is right here, right now. And the beautiful thing is, is that right here, right now, God is offering himself to you. Mother Angelica, a great holy woman, used to say that this is the sacrament of the present moment. What does that mean? That means that God is giving himself to you. All you have to do to get that grace from him is say, I unite my will to your will. But before we can figure out what is God's will for our life, we need to know a couple of things. So if God has a plan, it's a road. Most roads have signs. Most roads have guardrails. So I don't want you to go home and say, Mom, it's God's will. I, don't, I was praying and God said, I don't need to go to school anymore. Oh, no, honey. You're obviously not doing God's will. So how do I know a couple of road signs before I get into the more fun way of knowing God's will? So these to me are the boring ways of knowing God's will. So God does not will something that's outside of the Ten Commandments. He does not will for you to sin. God's will involves obeying the duties of your life. So if you're a student, it's God's will for you to be one heck of a student, at least the best student that you can be. If you're at a baseball game playing baseball, it's God's will for you to apply yourself 100% on the field right here, right now, not worried about your test tomorrow, not worried about what happened at school earlier. He wants you present. So that's pretty good. God even cares about how I play sports. Yeah, God cares about whatever you're doing in the present moment according to your duties in life. So if God's will was for me to go and build something, like build an ark, for example, if it's going to get in the way of my family, that's my primary duty, that's not God's will. 
So we have to be obedient to the primary duties of our life. We have to obey the Ten Commandments. We have to obey our legitimate superiors. So your legitimate superior is your, are your parents, is your mom, is your dad, is your principal, is your teacher. So if they ask you to do something that is within the Ten Commandments and not morally offensive, their voice is God's will for you. And if you do that, that makes you holy. The beautiful thing about God's will is that God has a providence and he provides for absolutely every aspect of your life. Things that we worry about, a lot of times we worry about them and then when the moment comes, the bad thing never really happens the way it happened in our imaginations. So God's providence will always provide and all things will work for the good of those who love God. That's scripture, that's infallible word of God. So if you're obeying your legitimate superiors, imagine how, how much more peace there'd be in your family if when your mom said, will you please wash the dishes? Don't judge me, mom. I'm, I, can, I can feel your look. <laughs> but imagine how much more peace there would have been in my own home if I would have listened to my mom, if I would have obeyed her. And not only would there be peace, I would be very holy. And probably my mom would be more holy because she wouldn't be cursing at me. <laughs> uh, the next thing that we need to examine is church law. So we, we're going to talk about conscience in a moment, but there are some things that are beyond our mental pay grades that we cannot figure out on our own. For example, the church teachings on contraception, there's church teaching on voting, there's church teaching on uh, just war, there's church teaching on what to do at end of life cir circumstances where you're going to be removing people from life support. These are all things that we need to form our consciences on to make sure that we are doing the will of God. Because when we're not doing the will of God and we're on that surfboard of life and we, we, we go outside of those bounds, we're going to be left to ourselves. We can drown in the ocean. We can be eaten by the sharks. So what is our conscience? This is very important. Your conscience, one way to say it, we're going to go through a couple of catechism quotes because it's so important. Your conscience is your best judgment. You are morally obliged to follow your conscience. You're also morally obliged to form your conscience. So if you think that, you know, let's say for example, you think that having premarital sex is good and fun and you really don't know better and you genuinely somehow do not know better. And one of your friends comes up to you and says, dude, not only is that wrong, that's a mortal sin. That's this and this and this. You have a, if somebody's making that claim against you, you have a moral obligation to find out the truth. You cannot have ignorance on something that's so great. You still have culpability for not figuring that out. So our conscience is our best judgment. We must obey it at all times. You might be called to do something. Maybe you become a doctor and they're going to say, you, you have to have this abortion. It's the law. You must do this abortion on these people. If it goes against your conscience, you should not do it no matter what. If for some reason you're, you leave here and you feel in your conscience, you feel this tugging, to come back to faith formation or go to church, you're going to find soon in these next teachings that that is the voice of God pulling you to do his will. So this is very important because a lot of times people, I, I will say things like, oh, I'm doing God's will or Mary, I feel like Mary's telling me this or I feel like Jesus wants me to do this. And people will say, Gabriel, you're nuts. Or some people will come and tell me, God told me this in the chapel. And I'll say, yeah, so? Don't you think I'm special? No. Why not? Because God talks to all of us. We just have to know how to listen. So these, I, I normally don't read, but I have to read these to you because they're so like, God is so good to us that he speaks to us in the present moment, but the devil doesn't want us to know it. So I, I'm trying to back this up with church teaching. So this is what the catechism says concerning your conscience. Deep within his conscience, man discovers a law which he has not laid upon himself, but which he must obey. Its voice, so it's kind of like a voice. You don't hear things, but it's more like a tugging, but it's voice ever calling him to love and to do what is good and to avoid what is evil. Maybe you felt this before. Maybe you were about to do something and you felt a tugging like, I really shouldn't do this. And then somebody else intervened and said, no, nah, man, it's OK. Don't worry. Or maybe you yourself are rationalizing it. You're doing something very wrong. You're, the voice of God is calling to you, asking you to love and to do what is good. And it sounds in your heart at the right moment. This voice of God is not going to tell you the future. It's going to tell you what you should be doing right here, right now. Why? Because that's all you have. Nothing else exists. It's all in our imaginations, the future and the past. 
For man has in his heart a law inscribed by God. His conscience is man's most secret core and his sanctuary. There he is alone with God whose voice echoes in his depths. It's critically important that you listen to your conscience. When you die, you will be judged on one thing and one thing alone, your conscience. You could have accidentally got into a car accident and killed somebody you didn't know. It's so terrible in the eyes of the world. You're a horrible person. But in your heart of hearts, you didn't know what you were doing. You're not going to be judged in any way whatsoever except for your conscience. So for you, you have to listen to this. And you're going to do your best to do that. And when you do listen to your conscience, you, and you're making the best judgment, even if you're wrong, God will bring good out of it for you and for others. A couple more quotes. Conscience is a messenger of him who both in nature and in grace speaks to us behind a veil and teaches and rules us by his representatives. Conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ. It is important for every person to be sufficiently present to himself in order to hear and follow the voice of his conscience. That means you need time to stop. If I was the devil and I wanted to keep you from hearing about God, I would constantly fill your mind with stuff to keep you distracted. There are so many more atheists today, not because atheism is something enlightened or intellectual, it's because actually people who claim atheism now aren't very intellectually honest and haven't thought about it long and hard like the philosophers of the past. It's because people do not have enough time in their life to stop and listen to the voice of God tugging at them. The Catechism goes on. This requirement of interiority is all the more necessary as life often distracts us from any reflection, self-examination, or introspection. Every single day of your life you need to pause. There's many things that happen, there's many breaking points in your life. Before you go to school, at lunchtime, on your way home from school, before you go to bed. These are all times you can take to pause, to listen, to go over your day and say, Jesus, what is it that you want me to do? And the last quote, or maybe there's one more after this. Conscience is man's most secret core and his sanctuary. There he is alone with God, whose voice echoes in his depths. If you're feeling a strong tugging to do something and... It's not against the Ten Commandments. It's not against the teaching of the church. It's not against a moral law. It's good for your whatever your state in life is. That is God speaking to you. And you can say with very great confidence, the Lord wants me to do this. Sometimes you might, many people need spiritual directors, but if it's something that's a little bit nuts, maybe you should get some advice from other people take in more data before making a decision but you keep track of this tugging you keep track of this longing and and it's a longing that really it, it's not so much that you're forsaking god's will for his even though you are in a way but deep 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 down in your heart you're longing for god's will because he created you for it so although it might sound like you're giving up a piece of yourself, you're really becoming more of the person that God created you to be. Now, this does not involve, see I put a typewriter up there. This does not involve you pushing buttons in your head and it should not give you a headache to try and hear the voice of your conscience. If you're pushing buttons and trying to do various like mental gymnastics, you're probably going, something's going on in your brain. Your conscience is more of an intuition and a tugging of the heart. Uh, the way I'm gonna give you the tips of how I hear my conscience. I hear my conscience, I, I, I practice uh, primarily two different activities. I will have a notebook, and this is very simple, and I'll say, God, what should I get done today? If you want to be a successful person, I'll tell you right now, you need to write down goals. If you do not write them down, you will not do them. If you want to be in business, if you want to be in sports, if you want anything in your life, you need to write it down. But how much more important is it that not, you don't just say, what do I want to do today? What do I have to do today? Say, God, Help me to do what is your will today. And all of that, remember what I said? It's part of your daily activities. So God's will for you is also to be a good father, a good husband, a good wife, a good student, a good teacher. So part of his plan for your day is going to be those important activities of your day. So getting a notebook and a journal, writing down every day or the night before, say, God, what should I get done tomorrow? 
pray about it, you write things down, and you will find that his priorities actually make a lot more sense than your priorities. And then you might find that you wrote something down in the morning or in the evening, and then all of a sudden your day changes. He will make it very clear through his divine providence and the tuggings of your heart that his will has changed. So at that moment, that's what you thought was best. Now he's saying, good, I'm glad you're obedient. Now I want you to go. The doorbell rang. Somebody needs help. Now go follow them. That's where you're going to find me in the present moment. The second way that I do this, me personally, is going to make me sound a little crazy. But I have an assistant who can testify that I do this all the time. I talk to myself. But I don't just talk. So I'll give you two examples. So number one, if I were to say, hey, man, should I cheat on my wife? No. Did it take him a long time to think about that? No, because he gave advice for another person very easy. All of us are very quick to give advice to other people very quickly. So and when I'm faced with choices, all I have to do is ask myself if that's a good idea. See that guy, he's talking to himself. Should I cheat him? Gabriel, should you cheat on your wife? Heck no, you moron. You want to go to hell for some woman? Oh, no, I don't. Okay, then you know what to do. That's one way. I also have a picture there of the Blessed Sacrament and of the Virgin Mary. This might sound crazy, but I talked to my spiritual director about this. So when I, have, when I have to make choices, yes, all the time, I will hold the statue of the Virgin Mary, or I'll hold my miraculous medal, or I'll hold my rosary, and I will say, Mary, what should I do? In that moment, if I'm trying, Mary's will is always united to God's will. Mary's always praying for me. If I'm trying to do God's will, I'm even going to marry. I can be confident that if I'm following my conscience, it's the best thing for me, that truly I'm doing the will of Mary because I'm following my conscience, which is the voice of God that echoes in my depths. And in fact, I'm even safer at that moment because now I have invoked the Blessed Mother. It's even better if you do it before the Blessed Sacrament. A lot of times people will go to the Adoration Chapel and use the, the Adoration Chapel as a library where they read books. And spiritual reading is good, but we have to make sure that we take time to stop, to look at Jesus in the Eucharist, to be still, and to follow our conscience, to make your list of what you need to do at that time. So finally, again, your life has a path. If you fall off of that path, you can say to God, God, I screwed up. Please bring good out of my mistakes. But God created you for a particular vocation. If he created you to become a priest and you choose to become married. If, you, if he created you to marry a particular individual, but because of your bad choices, you get married to the wrong person, your life might be more difficult. That's true. What do you do in that circumstance? You bite your tongue and say, I'll offer it up in reparation for my sins, and God bring good out of this, and he will. He will. I recommend getting it right the first time. But if you find that you fall, ask God, Bring good out of this circumstance. Get back on your surfboard. Unite yourself to the will of God in the present moment. And you're holy. All right. Small group time.